we extend a very warm welcome to you all as we meet for worship today. Although physically distanced at the moment, we are all united in Christ. We continue to pray that when the time is right, we will meet together in fellowship again in Kilhorn. Today is particularly special as we give thanks for the faithful Christian witness in this place over the past 180 years and for the continuing witness in our own day. As we reflect, it is indeed with gratitude in our hearts that those whom we have loved but no longer see maintain this church as a centre of Christian worship and a shining example to the local and indeed the wider community and their dedication inspires us to continue that faithful witness into the future. We are very pleased today to welcome as our guest preacher the Reverend John Dinan and we look forward to his ministry to us later in the service. God's word reminds us in the words from Psalm 118 and verse 24. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will be glad and rejoice in it. We worship God now as we sing the hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Service for morning prayer, 
beginning on page 101 in our prayer books. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed and to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Merciful Lord, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The choir will sing the anthem, How Can I Keep From Singing, with Praise Him, Praise Him. Thank you. 
canticle this morning is Jubilate, Psalm 100, to be found on page 120 of our prayer book. O be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Be ye sure that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. O go your ways into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth from generation to generation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. John White will now bring the Bible reading. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Christ Jesus from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory, and honour at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him, and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37, the parable of the Good Samaritan. And behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbour as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbour? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers, who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbour to the man who fell among the robbers. He said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. Thanks be to God. The choir will now sing, there is a redeemer.
who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because, through the weakness of our mortal nature, we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Go before us, Lord, in all our doings, with your most gracious favour, and further us with your continual help, that in all our works, begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name, and finally, by your mercy, attain everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. On this the 180th anniversary of our church. Let us reflect on the words of the psalmist as we give thanks to God for those who have maintained a faithful witness in this parish down through the years. Great is the Lord and marvellous worthy to be praised. There is no end of your greatness. One generation shall praise your works unto another and declare your power. We praise you, O Lord, at this time for the remembrance of your goodness to us as a parish. For all who have served this church throughout the years and for the continuing worship and witness in our own day, accept our thanksgiving for all your blessings Take our lives as we dedicate them anew to your service and prosper our endeavours to further Christ's kingdom in the days to come. We pray, Lord, that we may be a caring church. And as we do so, we remember those who are linked with us in the work of mission. We pray especially today for Jane White on the mercy ship. Chris and Lotta in Sweden, the leaders and the people of the Church of South Sudan, especially those in the Maridi Diocese. And we pray too for David and Olivia working with CEF here at home. Most merciful Father, you have called us to be a caring church, reflecting in our lives your infinite care for us. Help us to fulfill our calling and to care for one another in an unselfish fellowship of love and serving those who suffer from poverty, hunger and disease. Grant us the spirit of generous self-giving that we may further the work of your church and relieve those who are in need Help us who have so freely received from you to give us freely in return. We pray too, Lord, for our fellow Christians who bear their witness in difficult places, for those who suffer persecution and imprisonment for the gospel's sake. Uphold their faith and bless their testimony. Give them freedom of spirit and cause your word to challenge and change lives for the honour of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. 
Almighty God, we praise you for those whom you have called to the ministry of the church from edge to edge. May those whom you would use today know your will. Give them understanding of the task that awaits them. Strengthen them as they prepare to fulfill your calling and keep them humble and faithful in your service for the glory of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. We pray for the leaders of the nations. God of all wisdom and might, we pray for all those with the responsibility of the leadership of the nations of the world, especially those who are working to restore peace and goodwill to all the troubled areas. May the Holy Spirit so direct their counsels and their actions that justice and mercy may prevail, evil be averted, and harmony restored to the honour of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray for those in any kind of need. Father of all mercies, we pray for those in need, and especially for those known to us, for the sick in body or mind, that through your healing power they may be made whole, for the disabled, that they may have faith and courage to overcome their disabilities, for the lonely and those who feel forgotten and isolated that they may know your presence for the elderly and infirm, that they may renew their strength as they rest on your love. For the bereaved, especially those who have recently lost loved ones, that they may know your comfort. And for the dying, that they may know your peace. We pray especially for all who care for those who are ill, particularly in this present crisis, for your protection over them, and that those who are seeking for a vaccine may have good success. All this, Lord, we ask through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer our Saviour taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And we gather up all our prayers in the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Well, thank you for your invitation to be part of your 180th anniversary celebrations at Kilhorn. This is a church which has had a long history of witness and faithful service in this area. <clears throat> and it's a great privilege, therefore, to be part of what you're marking this Sunday. Since we last spoke together, I know there's been sadness in a good number of families in the church and I just uh, pray that in those households you will be able to call to mind the Lord's great love and to know his faithfulness new every morning these times. Let's pray together. Lord, you are a refuge and strength and a very present help in trouble. We ask you to be near to all those who especially need you at this time. And be with us this morning as we turn to your word 
seeking a message for today and for the future of this church community. For we ask this in Jesus' name and for his glory alone. Amen. Queen Victoria was on the throne. Robert Peel, the founder of the police service, had been elected to Westminster and there was a cholera outbreak in Belfast. And all that was the case when the foundation stone of the new church building at Annalong was laid. Now I have to tell you, Jesus was not enthusiastic about buildings. You remember he stood at the temple in Jerusalem and said to his disciples, not one of the stones in this great building will be left on another. He also would have known the words of Jeremiah to the people of Judah when he said, Do not trust in these deceptive words, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. And then also he used the most quoted verse from the Old Testament in the New Testament, saying, The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. It is the Lord's doing and marvellous to see. Now it's those words and the letter of First Peter that I want to look at this morning on this occasion. First of all, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and it is the Lord's doing and marvellous to see. Those words sum up Peter's personal experience. The disciple who denied and deserted Jesus was brought from failure to faith so that the one rejected became the cornerstone of his life. It was indeed the Lord's doing and marvellous to see. And it was Peter who later on the day of Pentecost was able to say, All who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. And of course, thousands came to faith. Again, it was the Lord's doing and marvellous to see. Later again, in this letter, writing to people who were having a tough time, who were threatened and isolated, he said, The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. It is the Lord's doing and marvellous to see. What an encouragement that must have been to those people. So on this special occasion, I want to note the message of this first letter of people, Peter, to these people on the margins of the Roman Empire. He asks them essentially to do two things. First of all, to give thanks and secondly to live well to give thanks and to live well in the first chapter if you look at verse 3 onward he says praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ because in his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. This is beyond doubt one of the great thanksgivings of the New Testaments. Sometimes when life is busy and each day has its own demands and we have commitments to our work and to our homes and to our families, our thanksgiving gets rather swamped. And this is the case here. He wants to say to the people he's writing to who are oppressed and isolated and threatened. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth into a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. He encourages them to give thanks, to praise God for all that he has done for them. Sometimes we forget how good it is to be a follower of Jesus and to know Jesus in our own lives. 
someone has said, we have been justified by faith and we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We are being sanctified by the Holy Spirit and he is not finished with us yet. And we have an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. There is so much to give thanks for. Now in this letter, Peter is writing to Christians in the time of Nero who were being taken captive and in some cases being set about by lands. Someone has said that in fact the Christians giving thanks for their faith in Jesus were singing and it was putting the lions off their food. What makes the difference here is Peter and then his readers have a personal faith in Jesus. If you look on in chapter 1 to verse 18 he says you know that it was not with perishable things like silver and gold that you were redeemed from your empty way of life. In verse 19 he says, But with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. In verse 21, Through him you believe in God who raised him from the dead and glorified him, and so your faith and hope are in God. He continues in that vein in the second chapter, in verse 4, he says, As you come to him, like as living stones rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also are being built into a spiritual household. And then at the end of that chapter, he says, He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. Peter reminds these believers that their faith is a personal faith and their relationship with Jesus is a very special one. He himself carried our sins on the cross by his wounds we have been healed. This is what Paul would have called the unsearchable riches of Christ, which are ours and which are cause for endless thanksgiving. The farmer Yates, long ago in Texas, who ran a sheep farm, was running out of money. He couldn't sustain his family by the income from the farm. And he was ready to give up. But along came some speculators looking for oil. And they asked about speculating on his land. When they did, as he thought, they might as well because there was nothing else for him. He discovered that he in fact was on a, on a farm that had a wealth of oil wells below it. The greatest oil production area in Texas became where Yates' farm was. So when we come to support the Lord's work with our gifts and with our giving, this is where we start. We start by giving thanks for all that God has done for us in Christ. I love that new worship song. My heart is filled with thankfulness to him who bore my pain, who plumbed the depths of my disgrace and gave me life again, who crushed my curse of sinfulness and clothed me in his light and wrote his law of righteousness with power upon my heart. That is personally what God in Christ at the cross has done for you and done for me. So Peter says, give thanks. And if give thanks was his first request of these believers and the people he was writing to, then the second was live well. Peter's letter is to people, as I've said, isolated and oppressed on the edge of the Roman Empire. They were 
a minority in a pagan world. And we should remember that's how we live today. The Christian faith is marginalised, is push, pushed to the boundaries in most of our daily lives. We are a minority. But he wants to say to us in those circumstances, remember the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And that is the Lord's doing. And it is marvellous to see. So when we face rejection, when we feel we're in a minority, when we feel we are marginalised and maybe even scorned, let us never forget that the stone the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone and it is the Lord's doing. So he opens chapter 2 when he goes on to talk about living well. He opens with the words, therefore, therefore, as a result of this, because of who you are, because of all the Lord has done, because you are a chosen people, you are God's special possession. He asks the, his readers to do two things. First of all, in verse 1, rid yourselves of all malice and deceit and hypocrisy and envy and slander. And then secondly, at verse 11, abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. Rid yourselves, abstain from selfish desires. And this word here, abstain, means step away from. I think I've told you before about a biscuit tin that I was given. And on the words of the biscuit tin, it, on the lid of the biscuit tin, it says, step away from the biscuit tin now. And the only way that I can avoid eating biscuits, therefore, is to make sure there are none in the tin. So stepping away from all those things that are selfish and sinful is the way to wage the war that goes on in our soul. Christians are always living in conflict because the things of the world and the things of self and sin will always wage war on our souls. And then the second thing he says is live good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day when he visits us. Live such good lives and there are two things here to notice. The word good means beautiful, <clears throat> attractive, notable and he says this five times before the end of this chapter. That's how important it is. Live good lives before the unbelieving world. John Stott, the rector for many years, the late John Stott, the rector for many years of the BBC Church, which you often see on your television screens. And when I see the All Souls Church on the television screens, I think of this. John Stott wrote over more than 25 books during his ministry career. And in the last book, which was called The Radical Disciple, he calls on his readers to live Christ-like lives. Live Christ-like lives. And that is what living well means here for Peter. It's time for us in today's world to do Jesus, not with words, not with invitations to meetings that are often attended by Christians, but to demonstrate the gospel with care and compassion and Christ-like living in our needy world. Now I know that already happens to some extent here in the church community at Kilhorn. And it happens because we believe that the stone rejected will become the cornerstone and it will be the Lord's doing. So when we go out into an unbelieving world to live as we might seem against the stream and against the flow of everything and against the culture, 
let us again remember that the stone that the builders rejected became the cornerstone and it was the Lord's doing and marvellous to see. Why did Jesus tell that story of the Good Samaritan? So that we could learn to break through the barriers of sin and division and sectarianism that surrounds us in the world in which we live. Why do people today love to sing the song Amazing Grace, John Newton's wonderful hymn? Because they long to see change, but they don't know how to achieve it. And John Newton's hymn speaks of grace in abundance, of lives transformed, of a better world when we are set free by the amazing grace of God. So as you mark this church anniversary, give thanks for the gospel and the good news of Jesus Christ. Live well and do the gospel, not in the church building, but outside. Because the stone the builders rejected will become the cornerstone and it then will be the Lord's doing. And isn't it remarkable that we are making these celebrations and, and observing this particular uh, anniversary at a time when we are not allowed to use the building? Think about that message and think about how you can take the cornerstone which is rejected by the world and make it the cornerstone of your life, of your church life, and of the life of the community in which you live. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, for all that you have done for us at the cross, for your death and resurrection, for the healing of our wounds and the wounds of the world, Help us to bring, we give you thanks today, help us to bring that message to our community, to our neighbourhood and to our friends who long to know and meet you. For your name's sake we pray. Amen. We thank you for joining with us in worship today and we pray that you have been blessed through it. We also want to thank the Reverend John Dinan for his valued ministry to us today. May God keep you all safe and well. Just a reminder, the midweek Bible study and prayer meeting on Zoom is on Wednesday at 8pm and we do pray that you will join us again next week for our Children's Day service. Let us pray. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and all whom you love, both near and far, now and always. Amen. The concluding hymn is, To God be the glory, great things he has done. <laughs>